Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to take a look at my latest build. This is an Antique Wireless Association's high voltage capacitor leakage tester. Uh, this is built off of a PCB from Antique Wireless Association. Uh, they provide you with a bill of materials with all mouse and part numbers so you can find everything you need to populate the board. The construction was pretty easy. It took a while though, not to build it, but to get the parts. I started this about two years ago. Got the board, ordered my first set of parts, and a few of the things were back ordered because of COVID and they took, oh, close to, I don't know, 15 months to show up. But they finally did and I assembled everything all together and finally, uh, finally built it. So I put it in one of these uh, junction boxes from Home Depot as I have been doing lately, mainly because they're just pretty easy to work with and they're readily available. Um, and they actually look pretty good. At least I'm happy with them. So the previous video, you may have recalled seeing this. This is a leakage tester for non-electrolyte caps. And it just has an LED. And if your capacitor is leaky, LED lights up. Basically, it's just a very high resistance tester. Puts a very small bias to a transistor and the transistor lights up an LED. So if we pull up, a, if we take an old capacitor, let's take this, I pulled out of a, piece of tube equipment, I think one of the seven, uh, 377 that I repaired. And if we take a look at it on here, we can see that this says, this says it's leaky. It doesn't say by how much, but it's a film capacitor and film capacitors really shouldn't have any leakage on them at all. That's 25 microfarad film cap. And we'll, uh, test it with a similar 22 microfarad polyfilm cap and what you can see it does is it does an initial flash as it charges up the capacitor and then that light just about is goes out so this is good for kind of a go no go test if you've got an old cap and you want to just know is it leaking probably this will do it but it doesn't really give you any kind of information as to how bad it's leaking can't test electrolytics with it it's not bad but i wanted something that had a little a little bit more options on it so we built this at its heart Really all this is is a current meter, puts a voltage through it, reads the current across the fixed resistor, and it shows it to you. So for calibrating and testing, I just got a one meg resistor in a little test socket. The build has got spot for monitoring the voltage on a separate meter if you want. This shows you your testing voltage. This shows you, you your leakage current in one volt per milliamp. And we've got a 5 milliamp scale, 500 microamp scale, and 50 microamp scale. And I got that idea from X-Ray Tony B off of his channel. Uh, there's a small op-amp scaler in there to uh, let you have a couple ranges. So we can select those. Testing. Discharge. And we can just take the raw uh, leakage amount, which is one volt per milliamp, out the side if we want to hook it up to an external meter, which we can, uh, which we'll do in a second. But just to show, if we take the resistor here on the five milliamp scale, and if I bring us up to 500 volts, you can see we 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 just get. 0.5 milliamps or 500 microamps of current leakage. And we bring it down, bring it down. If we could jump up to the next scale, we can see we've got 37 volts going in and we've got about 37 mi uh, microamps worth of leakage. 10 volts, 10 microamps. And when you're done, if there was a capacitor in there, you basically set everything back to zero, put it in discharge. So let's look at some capa capacitors. First thing I'm going to do is um, I'm going to put in a separate meter just so that you can watch along with the auxiliary output here. And we'll set this at Two volt range. This is not strictly needed. That's why it's got the meter in there. And you know, we're not looking for anything exact. 
you know, we're not gonna, what we really just wanna do is we wanna see how the capacitor is behaving, if it's leaking. So let's go back to our, uh, let's go back to this cap here. So this is a 25 mic, 0.25 microfarad, 400 volt capacitor. Let's put some test leads in there. And let's hook this up and let's see what it does. Put it on test. And so we bring up the voltage. Remember, this is rated at 400 volts. So up at 200 volts, we've already got a milliamp leakage. If we get it up here, so if you can see, we're reading one milliamp on the scale. We have one volt over here, and so that's one volt per, per milliamp. So keep going. 300 volts. Four hundred volts. We've got about three and a half milliamps of leakage, which is is a lot. Like I said these should these should be down in the like you know ten or less microamps of leakage, or reading none. So let's just dis discharge that, and let's hook up the. The new polyfilm cap, this is a 0.22 microfarad, so it's close enough. F 400 volts. Turn it on. And you can see as we go up, we read barely anything. I'm gonna kick this all the way up to the, the most sensitive range. And if you notice, you can see it pops up and then it comes back down. And on the digital view side, I mean, it's showing it's showing nothing. So this is this is how a film cap should read. Let's take this out. This is another old film cap. This is a 0 .003 microfarad, 400 volt. Look here, we can see this. This actually looks like it's in pretty good shape for a 50, 50 plus year old capacitor. Um, I mean, I wouldn't put it back in anything just given how old it is, but from a leakage standpoint, it's not leaky at all. So let's take a look at a couple of electrolytics. This is one that I pulled out of a uh, pulled out of the ICO 377. This is a 20 microfarad, 150 volt. So observe polarity, plus to plus, minus to minus, and let's start to bring it up here. All right, and at 50 volts, I've already got two and a half milliamps of leakage, which is horrendous. And if I don't want to peg the meter here, you know, at about half its working voltage, we're leaking like five milliamps. So this is definitely, definitely not a good capacitor, regardless of what its capacitance might read. Definitely something that you would replace. So let's look at, this is a dry electrolytic capacitor. This was a filter cap that was in a piece of tube gear. Um, same thing, 20 microfarads, 150 volts. Let's give it a shot. If you notice when we bring the voltage up, You'll see the needle comes down some. 
Ideally, you want that to keep coming down until it hits almost zero. That's the capacitor reforming. And that's where the electrolytic compound sort of redistributes itself on the layers of the, of the capacitor. And if you see, this is, feel the meter over here, this is coming down very, very slowly. And can it get us up to around 150 volts? I can get, no, 140. So it's entirely possible that we might be able to leave this for a good while and it would reform and come down to a leakage that would be acceptable but again 50 year old capacitor not particularly worth it if we want to look by comparison here is a new 22 microfarad 450 volt capacitor so it's rated for a higher voltage but same capacitance We test this one. Notice how quickly that comes that comes down. And again, that's the capacitor reforming, but good new electrolytes should reform. Whoop, a little too high there. Should reform quickly. And here, if we put this up to our max range. So this is this is at looking at tens of microamps, and we're at 20 microamps. A little bit high voltage-wise there. Let's just. Uh, you can see we're down. You know we're down at like four microamps, which for an electrolytic capacitor is perfectly acceptable. So this is what you would expect to see from. An electrolytic. A new electrolytic or just a good one. You don't have to test just high voltage thing caps. This is a 10 microfarad 63 volt cap. And we'll just test this one last. We look, it's got the same, that same behavior. Let's go. So we can see here. As we can see, this is coming down. This is at 20 microamps. And if we let this go for a while, it would probably come. It would probably, it would come down lower. So there are charts available, um, sort of generic charts for acceptable leakage for electrolytics for tantalums. If you can find the manual for an old Sencor uh, LC tester, they have they have some good charts in there for for generic values for things. But ideally what you want to do is you would want to go and look at a data sheet. So like this is, this is a Nichicon cap. So if you went and looked this cap up on a data sheet, uh, it would show you what to expect leakage wise. Um, and the leakage is often measured after a certain dwell time, after it's been running for let's say five minutes. That gives the capacitor a chance to reform and give you what the leakage would be under sort of normal working conditions. So pretty easy to use, pretty useful. I built it in this case because I didn't feel I needed to have it on my bench all the time. Uh, just because it's not something I'm going to use every day. So let's take it apart, take a look inside so we can see, see what it looks like. All right, and we're back. So this is the inside. Not the tidiest of builds, but it's the job done. Um, this is the, the back of the front panel. Here we have the meter for the test voltage. This is just one of those cheap eBay Chinese voltmeters. Works well enough. 
This is the meter for reading the leakage. This is an old triplet uh, meter. Kind of poked it, hunted around until I found one. I like the way it looks. We've got range selector switch, pot for adjusting the testing voltage, test connectors, power switch, and a switch for uh, testing and discharging. So, if we look inside, move a little bit closer here. Board in the back here, this is the board from Antique Wireless Association. Power transformer, uh, voltage regulators. Down there, that is the, if we can get the light in there, that's a precision 1K resistor. That's used for reading the, the current. Uh, in the back here, this is a dual rail 15 uh, volt power supply. It's terribly over spec for what it's doing. I think it'll supply an amp and a half. I don't need anywhere near that. But I have a number of those that I had ordered, so it was convenient and I threw that in there. And that's powering this little op amp circuit over here. And this is what does the range scaling for the for the meter, the current meter. And over here is just the 7805 regulator. And that's tapping into 15 volts off of the switch mode supply back there. And that's powering the little voltmeter on the front. You know, fuse. You know, power port, and that's that's about it. Um, looks like a lot going on. There's really there's really not. Um, like I said putting it together. It probably took me longer drilling and getting holes cut into plastic case than it did soldering stuff together. Several hours worth of work over a couple days, but it came together nicely. Like I said, I like the uh, I like the enclosure I have it in. I think it's a good size for it. Everything fits nicely on the front. It's got a handle so I can pick it up and move it around. Um, and it doesn't need to be on my bench all the time. So let me get this closed up and then we'll, we'll, we'll wrap up the video. All right, and that's it for this look at the Antique Wireless Association's high voltage capacitor leakage tester. It took a while, it came together nicely. I'm happy with the happy with the build, I'm happy with the way it works, and it's a useful addition to have on the have on the bench. Um, any questions or comments, put them below. Like and subscribe if you feel so inclined, and I will see you next time. Take care.